Hello, everybody. Um, so today I'm bringing you another video. I just got done recording a 19 minute video, so I'm a little bit irate right now. And the, basically, the video didn't have the audio, and so now I need to re record. And um, it's a lot of fun doing things over again. So uh, I'm going to do one video of both ninth grade and 10th grade because there's a lot of similarities. Um, so I'm going to try and go quick. If you've been doing the work the last few weeks, this is going to be similar to you. Okay. If you have not been doing the work the last few weeks, then this is going to be very foreign to you. Um, so without any further ado, here we go. So this is for May 4th for May 15th. Now, uh, again, you're looking at the freshman one, uh, but there's similarities. I'm going to jump back and forth between sophomores and freshmen when there's uh, a bit of a difference and show you what, what you're going to do on certain days for sophomores uh, as well. So uh, the first thing is uh, you guys need to be doing your uh, daily reading uh, every day and uh, for five days a week. So Monday through Friday. Uh, you need to tell me what reading you completed. Now, it says watch a video clip, a television series, or a movie, or whatever. Okay, I just got done watching Willoughby's. I, I, I thought that was a great movie on Netflix, all right? Um, different, but I thought, it was, I thought it was good. So you might want to watch uh, something like that, or I just watched Waco as well. Waco was fantastic, and that was a true story. So um, anyway, so you would just write reading completed or movie watched right here. Summary, two to four sentences, significant quote uh, from the show or from your reading that you did, and then explain your quote, okay? Why is it meaningful? Uh, rinse and repeat for the next day. Rinse and repeat for the next day. Do that five, uh, five times in total. So three more times after this because you already have two uh, templates right here. Um, so for Monday, the SAT words are here. Prayer model is right here. Give me the word plus the definition in this box. Give me a, a word that a few words that are synonymous with the word, and then give me an example sentence using the word and a word that is a, uh, an antonym to the SAT word. All right, and it's the same for the sophomores as well. Okay, uh, Tuesday, uh, write a paragraph on your own paper on the following topic. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry, write a paragraph on your own sheet of paper. Basically, don't do it on a sheet of paper. Just do it on this document right here. So you just right below this, you just hit enter and you just do it right there. Okay. Come on, computer, stop acting slow. Right there. And you just type your paragraph right there. Okay. I just want it all in one document, all in one place. That way it's easier for me to grade. Um, so this is your quote. You need to read it. And then you need to say, do you agree, disagree with the quote? And make sure you fulfill this criteria that we, uh, that I gave to you right here. Okay. Wednesday, I think this is where the sophomores kind of go in a different direction. So, uh, so for Wednesday, uh, freshmen, you guys are going to go outside and sit completely still for a minimum of two minutes with your eyes closed. Where did you choose to sit? Why did you choose the spot? Open your eyes and remain seated. Describe what you hear, smell, see, etc. How did you feel? during the two minutes and afterwards was it difficult to sit still respond in eight to ten sentences be sure your paragraph includes a lot of descriptive imagery okay imagery going into great detail about your surrounding all right um we took notes on that earlier in the year for freshmen for sophomores yours is going to be a bit different so let me scroll all the way up yeah again i just did a video for everybody and have to do it all over again. Anyway, all right, whatever. Wednesday, uh, idioms. So basically, you guys are going to, uh, for sophomores, you guys are going to write list, uh, use at least three idioms in a short story that consists of at least 12 sentences. Now, what is an idiom? It's a commonly used expression that, uh, whose meaning does not relate to the literal meaning of its words. So for an example, you have egg on your face. Do you literally have egg on your face? No, you did something that was embarrassing that uh, that that uh, humbled you and you learned from it, but as a result of it, you have egg on your face, okay? 
Um, you hear that a lot in politics too, like, oh, this politician, governor so-and-so or president so-and-so has egg on their face from this whole uh, fiasco. Um, okay, Thursday, it's the same for freshmen as well. So I'm just gonna stay on the sophomore page for now. Uh, Thursday is the Silverstone's feature song. You find a feature song off the internet. You uh, provide an analysis. You fulfill this criteria right here. Who is a speaker? Uh, what has happened, uh, who is the speaker addressing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is where it gets different for both freshmen and sophomores. So, sophomores, um, you guys are going to use, be using apostrophes. Um, so, make sure you put the apostrophes uh, where they belong. So, like possessive pronouns or possessive nouns. Uh, annoying music blared from Mike's earbuds. Okay. Mike is a possessive noun. Whose earbuds are they? They're Mike. So therefore, it'd be, uh, Mike apostrophe S. All right. So that's just one of the examples. Uh, Jesus mother. Now this is a bit tricky because you have a, a pronoun that, uh, ends with, uh, or a proper noun that ends with an S. So, uh, so the apostrophe would go after the S, all right? And then you could do the next three after that, because I just gave you the first two. Um, moving on down. Monday. Make sure you guys are doing the reading. Um, I don't know why for this one we did not include the reading log, but we should have. That's interesting. Okay, so uh, for your model, again, with these words right here, okay? Tuesday, again, it's gonna be the same for freshmen. Oh, and freshmen, let me go over the first week. Shoot, I had to go over the first week of freshmen. So freshmen, this is pretty long for, for, for you guys. Um, so I'm just gonna go over it real quick. Subordinate conjunction. When you have a subordinate conjunction, subordinate conjunction, let me go over what a subordinate conjunction is to begin with. Because, because is a subordinate conjunction. So when you start your sentence with a subordinate conjunction, like because, you have to have a comma in the middle of your sentence. Now, throughout grade school, you probably heard your teachers tell you, you cannot start a sentence with because. Well, that's actually incorrect. I don't want to say that they're wrong, because I, I could see why they would try to discourage you from using a sentence starting with because because a lot of people don't know how to start a sentence with because due to the fact that they don't know that a comma needs to go in the middle of the sentence, if that makes sense. So the rule of thumb with subordinate conjunctions is that if you start a sentence with a subordinate conjunction, like number two right here, after is a subordinate conjunction, then you need to have a comma in the middle of your sentence, okay? Um, the city of Norco. Okay, now this is a different use, common use, right? So when you take time or when you take a moment in the middle of a sentence to explain who or what something is or a characteristic of, uh, of the subject, then uh, you need to surround it with commas. So for an example, I'm just going to do number three for you guys. The city of Norco, comma, which is known for its old horse town theme decor, comma. So again, we're taking a break right here to explain what Norco is like. It's hosting parade this Saturday. Um, okay. And I grew up around Norco, and Norco is not a fun place to be. So uh, anyway. Monday, whoa, what happened? Oh. Because I'm not a freshman. <laughs> okay, so the fair model, freshman, you need to copy and paste that. Tuesday, again, is the response to the quote. Do you agree, disagree with it? Fulfill this criteria right here. Wednesday, um, in a paragraph, describe a time when you were bored, use at least three examples of hyperbole. So a hyperbole is an exaggeration. Okay. Buy a TV from Joe's TV where the TVs are so affordable, we are basically giving them away. 
no business will ever give you anything. Okay? If they give anything away, they don't deserve to be in business. Not unless they're doing some sort of sweepstakes where like one in 500,000 like can win a free 55 inch uh, LED TV, then fine. But just, just because we're in the business academy, if you're going to run a business, you can't be giving stuff away. You got to make money, right? So uh, hyperbole, it's an exaggeration, right? So you guys are going to uh, write a paragraph Describe a time when you were bored. Sophomores is pretty much the same thing, only that personification is added to the criteria. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to tell you that it is in the uh, hot desert. Da, 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 da. Two examples of our burly. I could have swore personification was, you guys were asked to use personification as well. Apparently not. So, okay. Um, cool. Thursday and Friday, same thing for freshmen. I'm on sophomores now, so same thing for freshmen. Not the same article, but it's it's uh, for 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 freshmen. It's going to be the uh, spaceship, uh, the the Challenger uh, space shuttle that blew up um, in the 80s, and Ronald Reagan gave a speech after that uh, after that incident. So you have to read it, and you have to give me a soapstone in regards to it. Like I've said before. I'm not, I don't like soapstone. A lot of my former students who've had me as freshmen and sophomores don't care for soapstone. They rather do the Osco. And, and uh, I, I think Osco's uh, are, are the way of life. You know, I, I think Osco's, if you learn how to do an Osco, you, you know, you know, you just learn so much more doing an Osco. You learn the meaning of life. You learn uh, how to do uh, different things. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, so soapstone, speaker, occasion, rinse and repeat, the same as uh, as the first week. Notice how it is Thursday and Friday. So we're kind of giving you a little leeway here where uh, you guys could work on soapstone for both days, all right? Um, anyway, Tuesday on May, what's today? Come on, calendar, pop up. So May 5th, May 5th, uh, Tuesday, periods one and two, period one, you will meet with me in the virtual classroom at 9 a.m. Period two, 10.30 a.m. Wednesday, May 6th, period three, 9 a.m. Thursday, May 7th, May 7th, uh, will be five and six. So period five will be 9 a.m. Period six will be 10.30 a.m. And then Friday will be uh, 9 a.m. with period seven, excuse me. Okay. Um, for those of you who have been turning in the assignments, by the way, you guys are doing okay, but you need to complete all the work, all right? I don't, uh, you know, in, in the workplace, you don't turn in partially done work. Otherwise, your boss just throws it back at you and says, hey, this is not complete. You need to complete this. So make sure that you're completing your work 100% so you can get full credit. I cannot give you, I cannot and will not give you full credit if you do partially done work. And I've been like that since day one of this school year. And for those of you who had me last year, I was like that at the beginning of last school year as well. So I don't know why some of you are still, still trying uh, partially done work, but it needs to stop because uh, this is not how the workplace goes. All right. So, so I want to get you in the habit of not turning in partially done work because there's nothing more irritating than your boss telling you, hey, you need to go back and do this. Trust me, I've been there and done that, and that's a, that's a, it's very irritating. You have other stuff to do. So um, please make sure you complete all your assignments. And uh, with that being said, if you have any uh, questions for me or anything like this, please make sure you have them ready for virtual class meeting. If you're just like after a virtual class meeting, you're just like, oh, shoot, I forgot to ask Mr. Anderson this question. Um, just go ahead and email me at luke dot anderson at sbcusd.k12.ca.us. 
Um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a good week and I'll see you on a virtual class meeting. Oh, and one other thing, one other thing, I almost forgot, almost forgot. The weekly attendance. This is what I'm gonna do for attendance to the virtual classroom meetings. Well, Mr. Harrison, what are you gonna do about the virtual classroom meetings? Are you still gonna give us points? Absolutely, I'm gonna give you extra credit points, even better. So, um, so if you show it to virtual class meetings, you will get extra credit points. But this right here, um, is for the 400 out of 400. So basically you fill this out. You've seen this with Mr. Lozano. Mr. Lozano gave me this, this idea. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing this and, and, uh, having you guys fill one of these out. That way I could get, uh, you guys to fill this out. Cause some of you have been doing the work, but I haven't been seeing you in the virtual meetings. And so I'm just like, well, okay. Well, I don't have a way of making you guys go to the virtual meetings. So, um, I guess of what some of your other teachers have already told you and uh, what I've talked about with some of you about the, um, about the whole grades not being, uh, being able to be lowered. So, um, so anyway, I hope you guys have a good uh, week, good day, and I'm sorry for getting this video out late to you and please forgive me for having greasy hair and all this. Uh, I was out chasing a gopher all day today and Still haven't gotten them. So anyway, take it easy. Catch you in the next video.